Good morning, this is Numerical Methods. Yours truly is Engineer Paulina A. Marzan. Our uh, topic for today is all about interpolation, specifically quadratic spline method. So, first let us define what is a spline. A spline, it is a curve that connects two or more points. It is a continuous curve that passes through discrete points. The quadratic spline uh, method goal is actually to derive an equation for second degree for each interval between the given points. And it is given as f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c, or this is the known quadratic equation. For n plus 1 number of given data points, there are n intervals that we can uh, find and 3n unknown constants to evaluate. These uh, 3n equations are uh, required to evaluate the unknowns and the following are the conditions to work with the 3n equations. First, we have the functions of adjacent polynomials must be equal at the interior knots. Second, the first and the last functions must pass through the endpoints. And the third, the first derivatives at the interior knots must be equal and fourth, we will assume that the second derivative at the first point is zero. So example, in order to illustrate on how to uh, uh, work with those conditions, let us have this example. Let's say we have here this given data points, P, Q, R, and S. P is 0.35, Q is 0.42, R is 0.78, and S is 0.96. So let's say we are going to estimate the value of F of 6.5 using the quadratic spline method. So that must be in between the points Q and R. So, if we are going to plot those given points, we will have this um, illustration. So, you will see here the points P, Q, R, and the S. So, if you notice, we have here some arrows. Okay. So, the uh, line segment pointed to by S1 is, of course, the line connecting point P and Q. That's actually the interval in between P and Q. And then the line segment pointed to by, or the segment pointed to by S2 is the interval connected to by point Q and point R. And the uh, S3 is pointing to uh, the segment okay, connected to uh, R and S, right? So, if we are going to uh, look at this, S1, S2, and S3 are the intervals in between two points. And then Q and R in the spline uh, method we call this as the interior knots. Actually, points P, Q, R, and S are called knots. But we have uh, specifically the so-called interior knots. So in this example, Q and R are uh, interior knots. And uh, points P and S are exterior knots. So from the plotted points, 
the equations of the intervals may be represented as follows since we are working with quadratic splines then the interval of uh, s1 can be represented by the equation a1 x squared plus b1 x plus c1 let's say that's our representation for s1 and then for s2 that's the a2 x squared plus b2 x plus c2 and s3 is a3 x squared plus b3 x plus c3 okay so if we are going to look at it, s1 that's a different line to s2 and also different to s3 so these three different curves or line you know, are uh, represented by uh, different equations also but since they are in one curve okay um, that must be represented by our f of x so that's the um, a combination of s1 s2 and s3 okay so as we mentioned above or earlier there are three n equations that are required to evaluate the unknowns and the following are the conditions okay so we have this earlier so, for the first condition, it says the functions of adjacent polynomials must be equal at the interior knots. Okay, so let, let us uh, look at the graph. Our interior knots are Q and R. So, the adjac adjacent polynomials at point Q are actually S1 and S2. And the adjacent polynomials at R are S2 and S3. Okay. These are the lines connected to the points. Okay. So at point Q, just looking at point Q, if we are going to uh, work with point Q, okay, then S1 can be rewritten as A1 4 squared plus B1 times 4 plus C1 is equal to 2. That's the value of the point Q. You can see the 4 and then the 2. Um, these values are from Q. And uh, that's considering S1. No? Now, considering S2, we can also derive another equation at point Q. That's A2, 4 squared, plus B2 times 4 plus C2 is equal to 2. Okay? So, if you're going to, to work further with this one, considering the condition 1, at point Q, we can find two equations by considering the adjacent polynomials uh, that uh, we can actually have from it. No? And so, looking at point R, at point R, this is uh, um, the point no, where the adjacent polynomials are S2 and S3. Okay, through S2, we can find an equation in point R that is the A2, 7 squared plus B2 times 7 plus C2 is equal to 8. And at point R, by S3, since R is lying on both S2 and S3, right in point R, we can also derive another equation that is the A3 7 squared plus B times 7 plus C3 is equal to 8. Okay? So, take note of these four equations. These equations are uh, among the 
3M equations that we are looking for. Okay? So, for the second condition, the first and the last functions must pass through the endpoints. Okay? Our first point is P and our last point is S. So, if we are going to derive an equation at the first point, we can use S1. Okay? And S3 at the last point. So, using the values of our points, we can have at point P, the equation A1, 3 squared plus B1 times 3 plus C1 is equal to 5. And at point S, we can have the equation, okay, substituting the values of S to S3, we have A3, 9 squared plus B3 times 9 plus C3 is equal to 6. Okay, so in addition to the four equations earlier, take note of these two additional equations as part of the 3N okay, equations that we need to uh, find for the unknowns. Okay, so for the third condition, it says the first derivatives of the interior knots must be equal. Okay? So the first derivatives of the interior knots must be equal, it says. Looking at the adjacent polynomials at the interior knot Q, we have S1 and S2. So, if we will take the first derivative of S1, we will have 2A1 times 4 plus B1. And if we will take the first derivative of S2, that's 2A2 times 4 plus B2. So, the third condition says the first derivatives at the interior knots must be equal. So, if we will equate S, the first derivative of S1 and the first derivative of S2, we will get that equation below. Okay? So, considering point R, we have the adjacent polynomials at point R, specifically the S2 and the S3. So, if we will take the first derivative of S2, equated to uh, the first derivative of S3, we will get 2A2 times 7 plus B2 is equal to 2 times A3 times 7 plus B3. Okay, so I uh, substituted right away the value of x in the equations. So the value of 4 is taken from Q and the value of 7 is taken from R. Again, take note of these two equations. These are added equations that we need in deriving for the unknown. Okay? So, for the fourth condition, it says, assume the second derivative of the first, at the first point is zero okay the first point is p the equation that we can have at point p is s1 so if we will take the second derivative of s1 that's 2a1 but it says we will assume that the second derivative at the first point is zero so if the second derivative is zero then we can get a1 as equal to zero Okay, so here's another equation that you need to take note. Okay, alright. So the 
and equations to evaluate the unknowns are actually the following. These were the equations that we were able to derive. And of course, working with this one, we need to solve for A1, A2, A3, B1, B2, B3, C1, C2, and C3. Okay? So, deriving for the unknowns, we will actually get these values. So, by by uh, some mathematical solutions like substitution and the elimination we'll be able to get these values okay so these values can be substituted into the quadratic equations s1 s2 and s3 earlier okay and of course if this is S1, okay, we will substitute the values of A1, B1, and C1 to S1 when X is 3 to 4. And we will substitute the values of A2, B2, and C2 to S2 if X is 4. To seven and uh, we will substitute a3 b3 and c3 to s3 if the value of x is 7 to 9 so from the problem to find f of 6.5 we will use the quadratic equation of s2 since 6.5 is between 4 and 7. Therefore, f of 6.5 is equal to 15 over 9 times 6.5 squared, okay, plus negative, all right, <laughs> that's it. Then we will get f of 6.5 is equal to 4.916666. That's the answer. What does it mean? So from the given points at x is equal to 6.5 then f of x or our y is 4.916666.7 Actually there's a 7 at the end. Okay. That ends my presentation.